Are you able to see my screen? Yes, Ben. All right. OK, uh, let's uh, jump into the session then. Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, uh, welcome to the Global AI Bootcamp. Uh, the, OK, uh, so today is uh, actually we are waiting for a bit more people to join in and then we will play the Global AI keynote. Till that time, let us you know get on with the session and we will play the keynote at the end of the session probably. All right, so uh, Today we will be looking at Azure Video Analytics. OK, uh, so there are two flavors of video analyzer. One was formerly called as uh, the video indexer. Now it is termed as video analyzer for media and one uh, new flavor under preview is the Azure Video Analyzer. OK, so we will uh, compare and contrast both of them and uh, when do we use uh, what flavor? All right, uh, just moving into my uh, presentation mode. Great. All right. Uh, just let me, uh, you know, have ha uh, sh have a show of hands for all those who at least uh, are cognizant with the basics of Azure uh, Cognitive Services. Just a quick show of hands. It's not that it's going to matter in the course of the presentation, but just to know, right? So this is the agenda today. We will look up. Uh, we will see about video analytics, some few concepts, how to detect, uh, identify, and specify models and uh, demos. So demos will be like throughout the session. It's not one particular uh, section where we will look at the demos. All right. Okay. So this is about me. You can connect me with my Twitter handle, which is at Fuzzy Mind One, or on LinkedIn. All right. Uh, so before we move on to the uh, custom uh, video analytics, right? I just want to have uh, you look at this uh, very brief bird's eye view of all that cognitive service has to offer us, right? So increasingly you see that uh, uh, all the cloud offerings, be it Microsoft or Google or, or uh, AWS are coming up with this packaged AI as a service offerings, which is you you know services that you can easily plug into your applications and uh, uh, immediately uh, make your applications capable of uh, of uh, 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 plugging in uh, intelligence and AI quickly into them, right? So uh, those these uh, services are typically available to you as APIs or SDKs, which you can directly uh, start consuming without having to look in that into the nitty gritties like what was the training mechanism use, what was the hyperparameter and what were the uh, modeling techniques, uh, of how, uh, what were the uh, uh, number of layers in the neural networks and all those things, right? Without having to bother about all these AI ML things, you can easily uh, understand the concept and uh, uh, use these services readily into your applications. So all these services which Microsoft has are capable of all the uh, various uh, cognitive things which a human brain can do, which is like take decisions, uh, see, speak, right? So, uh, I mean, you have computer vision, custom vision, you have uh, 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 conversational AI, which is capable of uh, talking, interacting, and uh, you have decision making applications that are uh, capable of, uh, you know, uh, arriving at some conclusion and stuff like that. All right. So these are the cognitive services and various offerings around those cognitive services. Today we will be uh, we will be uh, hovering more around the vision offerings and more about uh, the custom vision. OK. So uh, one typical question which everyone asks uh, us is like, you know, when do you use your normal machine learning Azure machine learning services and build your uh, machine learning models as opposed to using cognitive services? So uh, this is, you know, this is a typical uh, scenario. I mean, uh, the usage scenarios for each of the offerings. So use cognitive services when you don't have any specialized need. For example, you know, you have uh, custom vision, computer vision, speak, speech to text, text translation. All these are uh, 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 fundamentally available concepts, right? So you need not reinvent the wheel. Like you need not sit down and write all the algorithms to uh, have basic image recognition or object detection. So those are already done and dusted and out I will made available out there by uh, years of uh, refinement and uh, you know uh, performance tuning. So in those cases when you already have a set of pre uh, set machine learning models which are available in the market. So your use cases are based on uh, those sort of generic 
uh, scenarios, then you can use cognitive services like which are which are uh, based on all these uh, traditionally available machine learning models, and then uh, they are packaged as services and given to you. And then you you build your own models when you have very specific use cases. Like for example, I have a very specific set of documents in my uh, enterprise, and I have to do some sort of sentiment analysis on top of that, or I have to do named entity recognition on uh, documents in my own domain or my own company. Then that is when you know you will build your own machine learning models. Uh, so before we move on to you know uh, vision, right? So computer vision. So as opposed to a human, right? So what happens typically like when you or uh, you and me as human being, we look at a face. What do we quickly discern? We discern all the defining landmarks of a face, right? Like the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the lips, location of the ears and so on and so forth, right? So this is for, for you and me. Whenever you see a whenever you see a face, this is what we will construe as a face. The, the, the features which make up a human face or an animal face, right? So what happens when the computer sees it, right? So a computer, it's it it always operates on certain data structures, right? So for a computer vision, for a computer a vision to understand a face, it will try to chart out a object, a bounding box around around something which it can detect as a face. And how it charts out the bonding box is based on the features uh, which you see here. So it will have certain nodal points, right? So nodal points that will enable it to identify that uh, this is the nose bridge or the uh, distance between the eyebrows or the distance between two eyes and stuff like that. So basis the nodal points. The computer vision is going to chart out a rectangle, which is called as the bounding box. The bounding box is a very important concept in all of uh, computer vision, custom vision, object detection uh, mechanisms, which you see, right? So it will chart out this box and mark the coordinates of the uh, top left and uh, and uh, typically the uh, bottom uh, right hand side and give us the height and width, right? So it will chart out a bounding box and uh, the bounding box is based on all these nodal points, okay? So in case of Azure uh, face recognition, we have around 27 predefined landmark points, okay? Again, you know, uh, what happens is how does the camera uh, detect your liveness indicator? Liveness indicator meaning how do you know that if I have an application which is, uh, uh, you know, a, a face recognition application, okay? So a, a particular, let's say, a facility which will allow you to enter inside the room or the application uh, uh, by uh, face recognition, right? So in that uh, sense, what happens is, uh, how, how do I understand that I'm not spoofing my way into the application? So let's say I hold up a static uh, a picture in front of me of that person who's authenticated to enter. Then how do I identify whether this is not going to, you know, spoof my entry into the system? So this is something which is called as the head pose attribute, which is also very important in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, it will indicate a liveness indicator. Meaning it will keep a track of all the head movements from left to right or above or below something like that right and uh, then it will indicate that whether this person is real or not so this liveness indicator is a very important attribute in case of object detection phase detections okay so yeah so you can uh, detect head gestures like nodding head shaking by tracking the head post changes in real time so this is also a concept of a very useful concept when we are doing real time uh, video analytics all right now, uh, so when you look at, you know, images, so before we go on to analyzing uh, the concept of analyzing videos in real time, I quickly want you to walk, walk you through a demo for static images. Then we will, uh, then we will uh, look at dynamic images. So first we will look at static images. Okay. So, uh, okay. So when we look at static images, right? So let's select an image, for example. Okay. Now in this image, uh, if, if you if you see the image, what computer vision tries to do is it will try to understand and extract out metadata about the image, right? So what could be the metadata about the image is what what picture what story the picture is trying to tell us, right? So for example, it will try to caption the image 
it will try to identify certain aspects in the image. For example, it can see reflection, it can see water, it can see that it is a cityscape, it can see that it is a skyline, right? It can see skyscrapers. So it will uh, chart out all those features or what we call as metadata about the picture and plot it here. Okay, so this is water, sky, lake, outdoor, uh, maybe daytime reflection, and it will try to give a rough description like a city uh, skyline with water. Okay, and then it will try to also moderate uh, the content inside that, whether it has uh, some racy content, whether it has some adult content and stuff like that. Okay, apart from that, apart from just, you know, uh, analyzing images as such, it can also read text in images. Okay, so let's say, you know, uh, I have a certain, uh, I have to identify like, you know, the location where I am in probably by the picture which was clicked, then it has to extract out certain uh, la landmarks from uh, my uh, picture, maybe like, you know, the name of the road and stuff like that. So it can also extract out um, uh, 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 image uh, text from the images, right? Which, which we call as optical character recognition. Okay, it can also extract handwriting from uh, an image. So if you have handwritten notes or placards or posters, you know, it can extract out. So this is also a part of OCR, correct? So it's also part of OCR. Again, if you are uh, thinking of, you know, extracting optical character recognition from images, uh, you know, you have applications like form recognizer, wherein imagine that, uh, uh, you know, your computer vision can look at your form so instead of you know imagine that you, you are uh, you are an admin at some company and uh, uh, daily you have to look into scores of uh, receipts uh, people submitting for claims or you know uh, other invoice purchasing receipts and all and then uh, sort of uh, do an manual calculations like what was the date what was the uh, i mean what were the items purchased and what was the total subtotal those kind of things right so if imagine that if uh, this could be uh, sort of automated it like the computer vision can scan your receipt and then can understand certain fields like the heading okay the total subtotal invoice bill number date items purchased itinerary subtotal those kind of things then it would make life pretty easy right so what it uh, typically does is it will take that scan as an image and do optical character recognition of certain predefined areas like it will know that you know the top section is uh, is a, a header like you know it will give the name of the a company or the shop from who has issued the receipt and then it uh, the, uh, the left hand uh, uh, top corner could be the receipt number or bill number or invoice number those sort of things right so uh, this is this is one of the very important applications of optical character recognition okay so uh, reading handwriting in imagery or extracting out a uh, table tabular data from uh, uh, from images okay and then it can also recognize uh, celebrities landmarks right so this is uh, the golden gate bridge and it will give you the confidence interval as well so this is for static images so when you have uh, images uh, you know uh, which are which are standalone or which are static not moving okay now the same concept of extracting metadata of trying to uh, tag the uh, tag the image which we'll call as a frame in uh, video analytics right so the same concepts are applicable there as well right to to sort of uh, gauge more information about what that frame in the video is trying to convey to us all right uh, so just you know a quick uh, 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 pause here and a check about uh, let us like let, let's see you know let us go back to the initial uh, step again where we are analyzing and describing images all right so why do you think that computer vision in, in computer vision there is this need of you know extracting out this metadata or extracting out these things like just you know any any random guesses either unmute yourself or tap it out into the chat window either either way is okay any guesses like why do i need to tag images or why do i need to extract metadata about images because the same thing will also apply to uh, computer uh, sorry to video analytics using computer vision all right so uh, if you know just any thought about why would you need to tag images All right, 
so you know just uh, here's here some uh, food for thought so normally i'm very sure like you know uh, as I mean, many of us especially like let's say we are uh, we visit our friend's house and then you find a piece of sofa or furniture or a chair which is you would want to buy the same thing right so it's not unusual for us to click a picture and put it on to your google search or your uh, bing search to see like where can I find chairs like this or where can I find handbags like this or where can I find shoes like this, right? So how does a computer know that you are looking for yellow color chairs or you know you're looking for uh, navy color uh, uh, shoes, okay? Or you're looking at some, you know, a six inch high heels, uh, red color party shoes. How does it know that, you know, to show you the relevant searches, okay? So with text, it is still okay, right? If I want it to bring out uh, text results, like I'm searching for uh, maybe, you know, artificial neural network. So all the documents, uh, highlighting the word artificial neural networks it will fetch for me. But what about images? Images do not have any written text inside them, right? So it is these are just pictures, which is why it becomes very imperative for computer to analyze the images and extract out metadata. So this is also called as indexing the image, much like we index documents. This is how basis the tags, basis the description, basis the content which is seen inside the image. You, you can do an image search. So it is very essential that, you know, we uh, computer computers or uh, the AI algorithms for computer vision understand these images so that they can do a search on images or index images or, you know, do all sorts of other heuristics with images. Make sense? All right, so we, let's extend that analogy on to uh, analyzing videos in real time, right? So videos are nothing but extremely fast moving static frames, correct? So you have images, so you have frames, uh, image frames moving rapidly uh, in, in su succession that that will be uh, videos, right? So how to analyze videos in real time? One could be infinite loop. Infinite loop meaning you grab each frame as it comes and then you send it to the video analyzer uh, uh, service API and then consume the result, okay? What happens in infinite loop is that uh, it uh, because it is synchronous, like I grab a frame, I send it to the API, then I wait for the result to come back. It is very time consuming because, you know, frames like each frame uh, could have differing uh, levels of uh, difficulty for analyzing and accordingly each result may, you know, differ. Okay, so some frames are difficult to analyze. Some frames are pretty easy, like they don't have a lot of information that has to be analyzed and indexed and stuff like that. So uh, which means, you know, infinite loop synchronous becomes a bit of uh, time consuming stuff for me okay now what we do uh, second i mean to overcome this thing is parallelizing the api calls meaning i get 10 frames at once you know and then i send them parallelly in 10 threads to make 10 different api calls and i consume the result the uh, the the negative side of this is the, the downside of this parallelizing API calls is that I am not sure of the order in which I'll get back the results, right? So let's say I uh, my, my first frame I send, my second frame I send at the time t, okay? But uh, my second frame comes back, uh, the result for the second frame analysis comes back first. Now I have to consume the result in the order which I send the frames for, for me to make sense of the analysis which I'm getting, right? So parallelizing API calls is also not such a bright idea, which, which is why we have the consumer designer, uh, producer consumer design pattern, okay? So which means producer produces the frames, okay? Sends it to the, uh, to the API calls, okay? And then consumer has a queue, okay? Which will retain the order in which the producer had sent. So maybe even though my second frames come, comes back first, it is queued, for uh, to wait before the uh, first frame result makes uh, I mean is available for me to analyze right so this is uh, how uh, your uh, uh, video analysis goes on in real time okay so when you look at Azure video analyzer it was all uh, it was formerly called as video indexer okay so it's a part of uh, applied AI services which are built on uh, our Azure platform and uh, Azure cognitive services and it is a combination of uh, you know all of the cognitive services which is face because in your videos you will analyze faces right you will detect faces you will detect object 
you will detect speech, you will translate speech when you have those subtitles and translation services, okay? And you will also uh, do some sort of uh, transcription, okay? Vo uh, audio transcription and uh, voice transcription, text uh, uh, transcription, uh, translation, okay? So video analyzer is a combination of several cognitive services working in tandem, okay? It enables you to extract insights, of course, like as you see, uh, you know, the insights which we saw for an image that it could extract out metadata, it could extract out uh, certain uh, uh, key things from that. So with the uh, same thing with the video analyzer also. So from the video basis, what is going on in the video, who all are in, all interacting, what is being said, it will extract out insights. OK, then uh, when you uh, upload your videos to the video analyzer or video indexer, it will analyze both the video and audio. OK, so not only the, 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 the video content, it will also analyze the audio content. OK, and um, uh, it will extract out metadata, which can be stored in your mm. Azure storage account. <laughs> There's someone who's not on mute. Can you please mute yourself? All right. OK, so this is, you know, a typical uh, depiction of what uh, thematic uh, de uh, depiction of what video analysis or video analyzer does, right? So this is your video. OK, it starts playing because video video is consists of both uh, audio and uh, and uh, vision. OK, so there are two separate uh, digressions we have here. OK, so in your audio analysis, what 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 are you doing? Right? So audio analysis, you're detecting the voice activity. You are uh, detecting emotion. You know whether the, the speaker is the voice is emotionally charged or you know the voice is neutral or uh, the voice is uh, I mean, it's just it's communicating something which is sad, right? It will do sentiment analysis. It will have audio effects also like it will be able to detect certain audio effects like uh, I think a theater or uh, uh, background noises like a dog barking or something like that. OK, keyword extraction, topic modeling, brand detection. So we, we will see these in action, right? But uh, typically keyword extraction is what is being said in the audio. OK, so let's say, you know, this is a particular video about uh, maybe uh, Satya Nadella making some announcement about Microsoft Mesh and Ignite, right? So whatever he's talking, uh, key, uh, audio analysis extracting keywords from that. So he's uh, talking about uh, the future of Microsoft Mesh or how Mesh is going to virtually connect people and he is talking of holographic projections. Then it will extract those keywords like holographic, future, connection, people, all those things. OK, not only keywords, it will also extract out named entities like if he's talking of, you know, certain uh, uh, names of countries or people or products, right? Brand detection, whether he's talking of like, you know, if there, if there is a TEDx talk uh, going on about, you know, Nike shoes or so it will detect the brands, okay, there, okay? Topic modeling is on the, in the course of all your audio, which is going on, what are the major, uh, ma major things being, uh, uh, being uh, uh, conveyed to you, conveyed to us. Okay, so for example, you know, if I'm attending a talk on financial services, right, or or some, yeah, uh, maybe you know, fintech, uh, this thing, a fintech talk, then the topic modeling could be uh, about uh, uh, financial products, derivatives, and you know, uh, financial, uh, uh, I mean, market sentiments or geopolitical impact on finance markets and bulls and bears and those kind of things, right? The stock exchanges and stock market stock rates so uh, analyzing top 10 topics of what the video is trying to talk to you okay so that is topic modeling so that is the audio analysis part okay apart from that it will also do uh, speech to text so whatever is being spoken it will give you out into text okay and it will also convert like if i'm uh, uh, you know trying to if, if the video is if the audio is in spanish and i want the subtitles to be in english also possible Right. So all of us who are uh, I mean, who are uh, Netflix uh, um, uh, viewers, I'm pretty sure like that's how we watch Narcos, right? I mean, it was a Spanish uh, thing and then we all turned on our uh, subtitles in English and then that's how it translate are uh, transcripted. So this is your real time use case of how you analyze your video. So that was the audio part analysis where your audio was being played out in Spanish. You converted it into English uh, subtitles so speech to text and then text also translated 
converted text. So Spanish audio converted to Spanish text, Spanish text translated out into English text, right? So that I hope that gives you a sort of uh, idea about how audio analysis is done. Again, same thing for video. OK, so now the video part of that you are detecting faces. You are detecting optical character, extracting out text from that. OK, you are doing visual content moderation, like if the video has certain objectionable content being shown and stuff like that. It can also identify credit section like the end of the video and the start of the video labels. We'll come to these. We'll come to these three things. Short keyframe and scene segmentation will come up with later. It's better demonstrated with the demo. All right. So what what all I can do with video analyzer for media? I can do deep search content creation. OK, accessibility. Uh, we will we will look at these features a bit, you know, later because I think I, we should see the demo first for you to understand that what is all this monetization content moderation recommendations and so on and so forth. All right, so let us have a quick look at what what all uh, you know, fantastic things that we can do with your video analyzer. OK, so let us look at one of the videos, which is, uh, you know, Satya Nadella and Sam George uh, speaking in uh, one of uh, Microsoft uh, product launch events. So this is Satya Nadella, you know, emotionally charged and speaking about uh, a lot of things about products. OK. Now, first of all, what it can do, the, the video indexer, what it can do is it can identify people. So it is a nine minute long video. I'm not going to play it out, but in the nine minute long video, you know, so let's let's, uh, you know, randomly uh, look at uh, one of the frames, one of uh, uh, the parts where no, it was Satya Nadella earlier and then this guy, Sam George, right? So it can extract out distinct faces from your video. So this video only had two faces. You could have multiple. You could have uh, you can have multiple faces of the video. It extract out those faces, right? And then it will give you on which all times or segments these faces appeared. So this is Satya Nadella appearing at this time, 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 right? And then you can actually uh, jump to those instances. OK. Then you can uh, like for Sam George. OK, so Sam George is appearing at so much times here and then you can actually click uh, say click to uh, jump to next instance and it will show you the next time. So it. So it was he was appearing here now when I say click to jump instance, it is uh, it is jumping to the next instance and the video is moving to that frame where you know he's appearing again, right? So these are uh, the people, the face recognition. So when you identify people is basically you're identifying faces, right? So this is where the face recognition comes. OK, next is key topics. OK, so in key topics, uh, what I mean, whatever, whoever. So we we uh, we chose Satya. I mean, we chose Sam, Sam George, right? And then it will show you that what Sam George was saying in the video. So he was talking of outer loop, pending failure, operational dashboard, click and deploy, IoT edge, intelligent age. So for whatever time duration which Sam George was speaking, these were the keywords. Uh, you know, extracted out of his speech. So this is text analytics, right? I'm very sure that all of us know about uh, text analytics where it extracts out keywords trying to capture the essence of what I'm trying to convey, right? So this is this is how it does. And again, same thing, like if you click on one particular thing, OK, and then operational dashboard, it says it appears two times of total. So the words also it will the keywords that it has captured. Let's let's. Click on Jeff. Right, so you heard that, right? So when you click on the operational dashboard, it will exact and uh, uh, and click to jump uh, instance. It will exactly point you to the time where this word was uttered in the video, and then you know you can navigate to those uh, parts of the video. Same thing. So what Sam George was speaking, these were the keywords extracted out of it. You could go back and you could select Satya, right? And then you can uh, see, like you know, what were the uh, keywords in Satya's. Uh, uh, key topics in Satya's uh, part of the speech. All right, then next is sentiment. OK, so sentiment is like, you know, what is the sentiment throughout the video? So most of the time the sentiment was neutral. There were a few instances where it was like positive, maybe like, you know, there were uh, keywords which indicated that the sentiment was positive, like uh, we are looking towards a brighter future or this is the next gen technology or we are proud to announce or happy to announce those sort of things, right? So again here if you click to jump next instance.
yeah so this is like 20 times improvement right so this is like you know positive sentiment being conveyed here positive sentiment being conveyed is not only basis your keywords but also basis your voice inflections intonations a kind of things right so here again you can see your uh, voice changes and sentiments okay next is key annotations so key annotations is you know for example uh, when you see like uh, what are the key defining characteristics of this video so what all distinctive things you see in the video so you saw people like two people it was indoor uh, people like you know that the, uh, these were two uh, males like there was a black color there was a screenshot somewhere there was nintendo console maybe being shown somewhere there was floor there was computer there was monitor and then you click on the things like you know person so person is all this time uh, it has identified person was there in the seat like person was dominating a particular frame or a seat okay then ceiling okay at these points of time there was a ceiling screenshot okay so maybe you know it was they were projecting certain graphs and and uh, and uh, uh, charts right so these were the screenshots there okay let us look at monitor and let us look at the previous instance of so now if you see that you know this also is monetary here Right, so you, I uh, mean, just before we went on to that, you saw that there were monitors being laid out in front of us. Okay, before before the screenshot came, so you can look at all of these possibilities. Like you know, the what was the definitive uh, 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 definitive characteristic of that particular keyframe at that point point of time? You can you can. Uh, uh, okay, and then of course you know transcription is like whatever you are speaking you are going to have it transcribed uh, here okay so it will also do optical character recognition so if you see here like you know this is a screenshot it has done ocr and it has extracted out like the name sandwich here the different charts values numbers okay uh, and also whatever he's speaking keep a look out here i'm going to play a few words So it is saying that, you know, now each of this machine has its own unique telemetry that sending to the cloud. Now the telemetry was not transcribed or was not transcripted correctly and it, 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 it instead, you know, constituted as client buttering. So he was talking of telemetry, but nonetheless, you see that, you know, he's talking and it is transcribing real time. So what the speech to text is also done, of course. And then, of course, you know, you have translation. So what, whenever you're trying to uh, translate, that speech translation is also there, which is also a very common feature of all our YouTube videos, our uh, Netflix, Amazon uh, videos, right, where you have text transcription and you have uh, translation also. So just imagine the amount of wonderful things which we can extract out of these videos. OK, again, again, you know, a question out there that why do we need to have so many insights about a particular video? Right. So this is where, you know, we come to uh, the use cases for video analyzer. One very uh, common example which I give to people for indexing videos or having metadata out of videos is like, you know, we do a very, it is not uncommon for us to go on YouTube and search like here I was searching for global AI back together, right? And how does it know that global AI back together, uh, it should uh, uh, it should show me the global AI related videos unless you know there is some metadata maintained about this video, some insights which is maintained about these videos or most of us when we saw the Avengers end game, right? Once we came back home, most of us uh, went to YouTube and searched like, you know, show me the scene where uh, Captain America says Avengers assemble, right? So how to how does a computer know that I have to show you that particular part of the clip where the keywords were being said? This is what is basically the use for video uh, indexer, right? So extracting out uh, people, extracting out what they are saying, extracting out metadata about who was there in the scene, okay, or or who was uh, there in, I mean, who or who were there in that movie. So I can say like, you know, show me all the videos of uh, X Y Z person, or show me all the videos of Satya Nadella speaking in. Uh, uh, 
Azure, uh, sorry, in Azure conferences or Ignite conferences, those sort of things, right? So it has to identify people, it has to identify topics, it has to identify sentiments, right? So I'll just uh, say like, show me happy videos or when we are looking for cartoons for kids and all, we will see like, you know, show me XYZ uh, movies or cartoons or animation. Okay, those those kind of things. So exactly the need why it is exactly the reason why we need this sort of insights on our videos. Okay. Uh, and then this is, you know, now you can relate once you've seen the video analyzer in action. Now you will be able to understand the use cases. So deep search, of course, like when you are extracting insights from the videos, you can have a video library and then uh, this is, you know, indexing spoken words and faces can enable search experience of finding moments in a video where a person poke spoke certain words like our Captain America example where he says Avengers assemble, right? So unless you extract out keywords and people from a particular moment in a video, you won't be able to exactly extract that particular moment and show it to your users, right? Correct. So this is typically deep search, which is done in uh, 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 apps like your YouTube, Netflix, uh, Amazon, all your uh, movies applications, correct? Content creation. Of course, you know, depending on uh, so you, you are creating content for upcoming movies, trailers, uh, ad campaigns. So those sort of content creation also correct. So uh, these, you know, keyframes extraction. So for for a, a three hour movie, they make a one minute or maybe 30 seconds of trailer. So how that is done is extracting out the keyframes or the key moments from your entire uh, three hour worth of uh, reel. Correct. So this content creation accessibility. So when you want to index out content and make it quickly accessible, correct? Monetization, which is like, you know, but, uh, uh, it can help you increase the value of videos. So for example, when you are uh, making videos, you typically will have hashtags there, right? Like hashtag AI, hashtag something. So that will enable you for greater clickability or viewability for your videos, okay? And especially this is important for people who rely on ad revenue. So what to show people uh, at what time? So YouTube is now interspersed with ads, like if you are on the free subscription. So this is what this is nothing but monetization, correct? Content moderation is, of course, like, you know, who is searching what and what should be shown if it is like, you know, if it is uh, a YouTube kids and of course the content is moderated there, okay? So uh, those content moderation features and of course recommendations like basis on based on what you see or what you're you're uh, searching all your uh, news feed is 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 highlighted accordingly, right? So that is also for maximizing the uh, the uh, output for the user depending on his search history or his likes and dislikes, like personalization of content. Okay, so this is also a very common feature in in all your uh, social media applications. OK, so what features you can extract? We saw that we can in video you can extract faces, celebrity account based based identification is like, you know, if I'm training my application video indexer for my particular use case to identify these people. So now Sam, George and Satya Nadella were uh, clearly celebrity faces which could be identified. But what if I want to identify people in my organization giving uh, uh, participating in keynotes or uh, HR events and stuff? So account based identification. Thumbnail extraction. Thumbnail is like, you know, like you saw that in the course there was Satya Nadella uh, talking like maybe 15 times in the video, but the thumbnail which is which it extracted out was like only one one particular best face which you call as. So it will extract out the thumbnail to show one best face for that person. OCR like, you know, it can extract out optical visual content moderation. Yes. Scene segmentation. OK, so. Uh, Hold on to this. Hold on to this thought for a moment. Scene and keyframes. We will come to it later, right? Rolling credits so it can identify uh, with uh, the credits the start and end of the videos. Okay, animated characters. So if there are animated characters inside that, like you know, uh, if if it is a mixed reality or a augmented reality application where you had uh, creatures uh, and uh, animated birds, animals around there, it could detect that, right? And editorial short type detection, like you know, uh, those shots which are close up and uh, too short or uh, wide shot, wide angle, and uh, those kind of things. Okay, observe people tracking. So, uh, which is uh, look, I mean, uh, movement of the people throughout the video. Okay, so like Satya Narella at the start where he was, he was standing and his exact location, and towards the end of the video where uh, it, it keeps on tracking his uh, uh, movement. Okay. 
correct? Audio insights, we saw that, you know, transcription, language detection, emotion detection, speaker statistics, okay? Um, uh, uh, then audio effects detection, like gunshots, screaming, crowd reaction, clapping, those kind of things, right? Speaker statistics, like uh, uh, for how much time this, this Satan Adela was speaking, vis-a-vis -vis how much time uh, Sam George was speaking, okay? Uh, so all these kind of audio insights also noise reduction, like it will clear uh, the telephony or uh, uh, the telephony audio or noise recordings. OK, so it will clear up your background noise. And uh, this is audio and video on multi channels. OK, so it will extract keywords from both audio video. Any are named entities, named entities extraction on both audio video. It will extract out brands and location, geospatial indices, uh, landmarks, celebrities, uh, names of countries, those kind of things. Topic inference. OK, so as, as we said, like, you know, what was the, what is the main theme of what they are talking about? Extracting out those those, those topic topic is again, you know, a topic modeling is a very big unsupervised machine learning uh, uh, area where, uh, you know, your your uh, your text is grouped into topic dynamically by the AI algorithm itself. If you don't teach it, classify it as ABC basis your information. It will automatically de determine that these are the main themes and your uh, your uh, documents or your text or your audio should be classified under these buckets. OK, so topic in uh, inference artifacts like extracted set of next level detail artifacts for each of the models and sentiment analysis, which is positive, negative, neutral. OK, and uh, another like the, the one which we saw here was video analyzer for media for for our media and there's another uh, in preview mode, which is video analyzer, which is more for uh, on the edge, which is with Internet of Things. OK, so this is for custom vision and uh, video analytics more uh, often on uh, uh, Azure IoT Edge. OK, so again, it is, you know, makes use of the same technologies, but on a limited uh, scope and on the edge. OK, well, things become a bit tricky on the edge because of the uh, runtime, because of the size of the memory available and the communication mechanisms like it's not cloud, right? You're not communicating with the cloud. These are devices which are connected to each other. So there are a lot of uh, other heuristics to uh, we, we need to take care of, like how they are communicating the protocols, the bandwidth, how they are subscribing, what pattern pops up they are using, right? So yeah, so this is in preview mode and it is more for, you know, IoT edge, okay? Uh, coming back to very important concept for video analytics, which is, which is scene shots and keyframes. OK, so scene scene is something, you know, like uh, it is comprised of uh, scene is comprised of shots. OK, and so let's say, you know, there's there's a particular uh, how how does a video know that the scene is changed? OK, so scene is changed means now you see here three people sitting together and talking. OK, so uh, uh, shots are like, you know, it will take a shot of uh, three. I mean, this scene is comprised of th three different shots. So this is one person, then these two people, and then all three of them together. OK, so as long as they are in the same position and talking, that comprises one scene. As soon as a third uh, one more person comes into the picture or, you know, uh, they both uh, they all stand up and they shake hands or do something which is very different to this particular uh, setting which we have here that is called as a scene change, right? So may maybe, you know, a fourth person enters or they do something different apart from sitting and, and talking. So now suddenly one of them starts crying or clapping. That is a scene change, right? So now th that will uh, spawn a new thread of shots, okay? So this is how your videos are segmented, like how it knows that, you know, this was Satna Nadella talking and now Sam George entered and now that is a different scene. So Satna Nadella was, you know, maybe uh, he was speaking to us directly looking into the camera. Then what happened? So that was a scene one. Then after a few seconds, like after a few uh, seconds passed, suddenly the camera panned uh, into a long shot. And, you know, Satna Nadella was uh, seen looking at some big screen with, you know, certain charts and stuff like that. So that becomes a scene too. So something which is uh, uh, 
which is a discernible difference between you know two uh, time t and t and t plus one that is called as a scene change right that is how you know these these things enable the video analyzer to uh, sort of do segmentation okay so they will segment out the videos and then say that okay he was visible from he was talking about xyz from 1.02 to 1.10 uh, for example right okay and key frame is uh, that one particular frame that will uh, best represent each shot okay so now maybe this short one was con con comprised of 10 key frames where all of them are just uh, in the same position sitting and talking so out of those 10 shots it selected this uh, one particular key frame to represent that short one so uh, out of the 10 particular key frames it represented this key frame to represent short one same for short two maybe you know the camera was concentrated on these two people for maybe 10 times okay but it selected this key frame as the best representation of short two and short three so keyframes make up shots and shots make up scenes okay and the scenes together make up the video and then your scenes are segmented out uh, to extract insights and then that is how you are uh, you know all those segments which you like satya nadal was talking from so and so to so and so sam george was saying the word operational dashboard from so and so to so and so so that segmentation is possible because you have keyframes and shots and different scenes uh, working in tandem together all right, so uh, this is the GitHub link for you to. This is a GitHub link for you to, uh, you know, go and experiment with the uh, uh, with the uh, power power apps for uh, doing video analytics. OK, how to start with your video analytics is you go here. You have something which is called as. Uh, come on. OK. Yes, so you have the video indexer uh, account login okay uh, you i have uh, i mean i have my own subscription i have tied it up to my azure subscription and you have this uh, uh, library here media library here what you will go here is these are library uh, of your up all your videos which which you have out there right so i don't have any videos uh, right now uploaded with me with those videos you can create project okay so when you create project you can select any videos from the library which you have or you can create projects from the samples which you have here okay so samples if you see so now let's let let, let us you know uh, go here okay and this is one sample video which was uploaded and uh, and uh, insights were extracted so if you see now this particular video it has nine people all together okay and this is the best face extraction of all those nine people right so this is gaming services on azure and so these were nine people uh, throughout which were recognized and you can see like you know so this is the called the thumbnail which is the best uh, uh, face extraction of this person now this person is identified identified as Christopher uh, Lil Lilliebald, okay, Lilliebald, and uh, these the, these are the segments on which he appeared, okay. So this is how this is why your keyframes and your scenes and shots make a lot of sense because this is how they are used to segment, okay. Same thing for this. Then there were 23 uh, topics which were uh, which which were identified, okay, by the. Uh, a machine learning model for video indexer which is software engineering web development and you click on each of them and you know you can find out where all they were mentioned and you can go to those instances in the video click on them and move to those instances in the video where they are where they are being said okay it has uh, also identified one audio effect okay so audio effect uh what like if there was a clapping sound or there was some particular background sound for a dog barking or something like that then it has identified 30 keywords, okay, which are web app, virtual machine, game developer. It has identified 139 labels like person, human face, clothing, screenshot. Okay, so you know we also will search videos with these labels, right? Like uh, uh, XYZ uh, scene in a movie with with uh, XYZ or ABC wearing yellow color clothes or yellow color shoes or funny uh, movies uh, funny movie scenes with xyz uh, buildings or something like that so that's how it you know labels become important named entities are your uh, named ner named entity recognition which is names of countries uh, people brands okay 
uh, known celebrities and stuff. Emotions like you know, uh, it was only in emotion detect detected was joy. Otherwise, it was more or less neutral. And then these are the scenes detected, right? So if you see, this is the first scene here, right? And then there was a scene transition. Okay, so maybe in the scene transition. Uh, they, they did something different or there was something different in the background, something moved or they moved, right? So these uh, this is called as scene transition. OK, so this is how, you know, it will uh, it will uh, detect the transition between scenes and it will segment it out. OK, and then in this scene, it will tell you the number of shots in the scene, because as we saw that shots make up a scene right so in this particular scene where you see this but fire and building and the uh, the guard here it is comprised of 22 shots okay and each of those shots are comprised of further keyframes so if you look at this this particular scene it has three keyframes this particular scene has uh, just one keyframe okay and uh, same thing this particular shot not three this particular shot has again, you know, one keyframe and stuff like that. So now you understand that, you know, frames, shots and scene. So per per scene, you have shots and per shots you have frames. OK, and then as you click on those scenes, it will navigate you to the, those uh, parts in the video. So you click on these and it will navigate you to those parts. You click on the shots in that scene and it will navigate you to those particular uh, instance of time or where that shot was being captured. All right, correct. So uh, this is how uh, you know this is how it all uh, ties up. All right. Okay, so yeah, let me copy out this link and uh, paste it here. Okay, this is how where you will find all the GitHub uh, uh, links uh, for your demo applications like how to uh, connect your accounts and how to sign into the video uh, indexer application and how to sort of you know um, authenticate yourself okay uh, you'll find it here and uh, yeah that brings us to the end of our uh, our conversation our, our session Right, so th these are some of the internal nitty gritties of uh, the applications like, you know, principal comp component recognition, uh, uh, sorry, principal uh, PCA, principal component analysis is used for, uh, for, for reducing the n dimensionality to, and then your eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and all, right? So if we were to go into the nitty gritties, I'm very sure all of you would be something like this. So that's why just get your Azure subscription and uh, start enjoying the, uh, the rich variety of services with which Azure Video Indexer can offer you. All right, so I'm open to any.